those organizations and the opportunity that we've had to participate with these people has has given me a lot of meaning in the work that I do. It's so enjoyable. It's my favorite my favorite thing to do. I'm your host, Anna Malikian, and before we start, please remember to visit mindset.zone. Yes, instead of .com, it's .zone to access all the episodes and other amazing resources, all at mindset.zone. And if you want to get the free chapter of my book, Mindset Zone, please go to mindset.zone or slash book. Today, our special guest is Mark Wills. In 2008, he and Dr. Wells were awarded the AACD's Outstanding Scientific Advancement in Cosmetic Dentistry Award for their work with no prep veneers. He's a fascinating person who donates his time to a no-profit call, Give Back a Smile, that has as his mission to assist rebuilding the smiles and lives of adults who have suffered dental injuries from domestic violence. Welcome to the Mindset Zone, Mark. Thank you so much, Anna. So I'm curious because you have this interesting company that does really innovative work in cosmetic dentistry, and you are doing this with a mission. So how did you start in this field of cosmetic dentistry? I got involved with a dental lab when in the late 90s, I was uh, recently married and was going through a transition in my career, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And my older brother owned a dental lab that his father-in-law had started. And I knew a little bit about the business. It seemed like that might be something that I would enjoy. And so it's kind of a funny story. I actually went to, there was a trade school here locally that that had a, a year-long program to teach dental technicians the skills to get into the industry. I went to the school and they had a comprehensive exam that everyone had to take as an entr- entrance exam. And I completely failed it. <laughs> it was uh, the math section that, that got me. I've always been horrible at math, but um, so I failed this test and they said, well, we can't let you into the school. You have to take this college class. Uh, it was like a math, an advanced math class. After you take that class, then you can reapply. Right. And I just did not have the time. And so I went back to my brother and I said, listen, they, I, I didn't pass the test. I'm not going to be able to get into the, to the school. And he said, well, a few years earlier, he had purchased the training system that the school uses to teach their students. And it was a series of binders and VHS videotapes and models. Oh. Yeah. So, and he said, if you, if you want to train yourself, he said, you're welcome to do that. And I'll be here to answer questions for you. And, and so that's what I did. I would go in every morning and sit there and watch videos and then go to the hands-on portion and, and do the work. I love it because it's an example and say, okay, life circumstances, you need a job. That was an opportunity. Why not? You had to get the training. The conventional route didn't work, but there was an alternative and you took it and you did it and you become as a technician in this area. Yeah. I worked in pretty much every department of the laboratory. After a year and a half or, you know, maybe almost two years, I started getting really frustrated because (laughs) just felt like the type of work we were doing was mainly insurance-based dentistry, which is for people that have broken a tooth or you know, they've lost a tooth for whatever reason. And so we would replace that. So the type of work we were doing is kind of just like fixing things that were broken, not super exciting. You know, we didn't really know any of the patients. It was just the work would come in and we would sit there and you would just kind of go through this assembly line process to get these crowns made. 
So a very assembly line. So in the beginning, even with the challenge of having to learn, but there was also the fascinating of learning something new. Then when mm. that uh, you were ready, okay, doing the thing and became the routine became too much of a routine and you are not seeing the meaning of it. Yeah, I just wasn't happy doing that. You know, it was it was a decent job. Paying the bills. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. But it just there wasn't I wasn't excited about it at all. So did you start to become detached from it? Like, why bother? No, I just, I was just really looking for, for something. I didn't even know what it was. And at that time, one of the big dental manufacturers came out with some new materials and it really kind of became the future of dentistry when they developed these materials. It was an all ceramic material. And it's not something that we were using much in the laboratory, but my brother had the foresight to say, listen, this is kind of where the industry is going and we need to adopt this new material, get trained on it, learn how to use it. And he gave me the opportunity to take over that department because they didn't have anyone else there that had time to do it. And so that's what I did. And he, um, my brother introduced me to a couple of people that were doing some really innovative things with their techniques. And he allowed me to go sit at their feet and learn for a few days. And it completely changed my perspective, what we were doing, because it was just, it was another level. It was more aesthetic. It was just an exciting new process. And so was the fascinating of learning something new and you were starting to see more an impact of that work? It brought a lot of new business into our, into our lab initially because we were offering a new material. And I just kind of felt like it was my opportunity to do something that hadn't been done before, especially in, in, in our company. And so I just took it and, and ran with it. And that involvement with some of these other technicians that I was learning from and opportunities that came up because there was a massive cosmetic dentistry boom in the early 90s, early 2000s, where these training centers were being opened up. The two main ones were in Las Vegas, and then there was one at the University of Pacific in San Francisco that I found out about and wanted to participate wanted to learn about cosmetic dentistry. So you started that desire of learning, the desire of being in the front line and the odyssey of the innovation of the new things that starts to energize you again in the work that you are doing. Yeah, absolutely. So I, um, I participated in this course and there was different levels of the course. There was a beginning level which is where most of the dentists start that go into this program. And then there was an advanced level for the dentists. For the level one course, I think there was probably five dental labs around the country that sponsored that course. What that meant was for each of the course, there was maybe 20 or 30 dentists that would bring their patients and give them a new smile. And as a sponsoring laboratory, they would bring these technicians in from their laboratory and pair them up with doctors and they would do the work for the doctors. And it was a good opportunity for them to meet new potential clients and do marketing and show them their work. The level one course was not open to other labs, only the sponsoring laboratories. The advanced course was open to any other laboratory and you just pay a fee and they would pair you up with two doctors. You would do the work under the direction of the main educator for the laboratories. So that was a good opportunity too. But when I went to the course, I heard about these entry-level courses where as a laboratory, if you went in, you could be paired up with potentially 10 dentists. So you'd have much bigger opportunity to do marketing and meet new clients and grow your business. And you know, I was pretty new in the industry and didn't really know much of anything, but I thought, you know, what we really need to do is we really need to be involved with this. And this was really something that shifted a lot of the, your perspective, correct? 
a hundred percent. But I, when I was talking to the other laboratories and some of the other instructors, they said, well, you, there's no way you're going to be able to be a sponsoring lab. There's a l- list of mile long of laboratories that want to get involved and no one even knows who you guys are. Well, I didn't let that discourage me. When I got home, I contacted the director of the program and he knew who I was because I had just been there. And I said, listen, we want to be a sponsoring lab. We want to get more involved. He said, well, tell me a little bit more about your lab and who you are and, and what you're doing. And of course, I, I embellished a little bit and said, oh, we, we, we do cosmetic dentistry all the time. And, you know, we're, we're, we're great at it. We're, we're an amazing lab. And believe it or not, he, he allowed us to start participating in the courses. Yeah, you believe in your vision. You spoke from the vision where you want to go and you got in. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I've, there have been so many instances throughout my career where I've done that. And I, I think it's just, you know, I've had other technicians and other lab owners that have said, how, do you, how have you done this? How have you built this? this business. And I, I believe it comes down to two things. First of all, I think you have to build relationships with people before the ask. So many people get into a new situation and they're so quick to jump on their ask and they want people to do things for them. But without that relationship, it doesn't work. So I've just really focused on trying to build relationships with the, with the right people that can help me. And then provide value for those people over time. Love it. There was from a previous conversation, another detail in your story that I absolutely love, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was in this training that also you start to see the impact of the work that you are doing, the cosmetic dentistry, add in people's lives, correct? Yeah, that was probably one of the, the biggest motivators for me. Because up until that point, I never really had the opportunity to see any of the work that I was doing actually being placed in the patient's mouth or how it made any effect at all. And the reality of it is, if you go to the dentist because your tooth is broken and you get a new tooth, it's not going to change your life a whole lot. (laughs) But um, the opportunity to be in in the clinic with 30 or 40 patients at a time and be able to go through the process with them and how many of the patients would sit up after their veneers were placed and just absolutely lose it, you know, just cry because for the first time in their life, they felt like they had the confidence to smile and talk and eat. And it's incredibly life-changing for a lot of people. Yeah. We don't understand if we didn't have that challenge how meaningful I were as an adult, the braces to correct a little bit. And I still remember for me was the thing when the braces came off. And I see that when my daughter had the braces and the other friends of her, the big thing is that after the braces came out, came out they, wow, they, they are not hiding the smile from a photo anymore. I felt that too, after the braces came off. Okay, now I can have a, a, a full smile. I don't have to be thinking that I have solid in there, something like, and I think for people that are ashamed of their teeth for whatever reason it is, and then uh, uh, there is that transformation that now they have a smile that they can be proud of, uh, that should be really transformational. Yeah, it it is. I've seen it change thousands of lives. And that for me was kind of my why. You know, that gave me a path where I could see a path in my, in my career um, and just decided that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a part of the process. So the thing that starts with a good business uh, kind of decision, okay, this is good for the business, to business development, to connect with more people, but it was already very connecting base, but then you connect with your why during that journey too. Absolutely. And, you know, it just being involved with that group, when eventually that group ended, I think it was after about maybe five or six years, the director of that program started a new program that was a traveling program that would go to dental schools all over the country and um, asked me if I would be the laboratory director for that program, which involved 
me training other laboratories on how to do the work that we were doing. And so that process just opened a lot of doors for me and, and put me in front of a lot of potential clients. And that's how we grew our business. You know, over the next seven or eight years, we tripled the size of the business. As somewhere along your professional business journey, you had to restart your company from the scratch. You had to start with you and one employee. Can you tell us about that restarting? Because you already had that lots of experience, information, but the, tell us a little bit about the challenge of restarting. It was unexpected. You know, my brother and I were running a very successful company, growing it like crazy. I went, I was going through a, a really difficult time in my life. Um, my wife and I got divorced, was moving through some really poor decisions in my life. My brother decided that he did not want to be partners with me anymore and kind of forced me out of the company. I wasn't able to take any of the employees that I had trained. I did work out a deal where I was able to take one guy with me that he and I were, were pretty close friends. Yeah, we just, I mean, we had no place to, I had no place to even start the business. So I, I found a little <laughs> kind of a hole in the wall laboratory and talked to the guy and he let us rent space from him. And the hard part was that in our contract, legally, I couldn't talk to any of the employees. The previous ones. Previous employees. But the clients, I could contact any of the clients because most of them were my clients and I had brought most of them into the company. So I had tons and tons of work and no one to do the work. <laughs> yeah, me and one other guy. So we basically worked around the clock. I mean, it was day and night. And during that time, also just desperately trying to find people to come work. And to train. Yeah. So I could start creating a new team. And it was several years of 18-hour days where literally I would, a lot of days, I would just work until I couldn't work anymore and then lay on the ground next to my desk and sleep for a few hours and then get back up and do it again. What did you learn from those years? Okay. Is the, how did you learn to, because yes, we can push ourselves in terms of uh, working long hours, but there is a limit when I guess you were growing, trying to grow your team, getting more people in train, but was there a point that you were overextending, that you felt that you were overextending yourself and your own capacities? Oh, absolutely. There would be days where just because of the schedule I was trying to keep, where my body would just shut down. It was physically and emotionally exhausting. And so there were definitely times where I pushed myself way too far and my work suffered because of that. And how do you correct that? How do you manage to from there? Because now how many people do you have in your team working for you? It's still a pretty small team. I've got 14 people here that, mm -hmm. that work with. Honestly, the only, the only way out of it was to get more people. And so I just didn't feel like I had a choice. It wasn't like I recognized that I was running myself into the ground and it just became that much more important to find people and, and get them trained. And then the training brings, when we did bring someone in, there was an additional workload just of training the people on top of the work. I mean, it just, it takes a lot of time to build systems and train people. And you have to be willing to do whatever you have to do to get through it. Yeah. And you did it and you managed to build a business that now you have the time to give back. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us more about that, about why then becomes so important when you have built the conditions for that, that to give back to this organization of Give Back a Smile. The Give Back a Smile program is a, is a really cool program, and it, it involves doctors all over the country. People can go to the website to Give Back a Smile and submit their case. And then what they do is they will, based on where you live, they will kind of assign you to a, a dentist that's participating in the program. 
And then the dentist will contact their laboratory, ask them if they want to participate, which is basically, you know, fixing the teeth, fixing their smile of these patients that have, that have been through some really difficult things in their life. And, and it's all pro bono, but there's several different organizations out there that are similar to that. And we try to stay pretty active with those and pretty involved. So we usually do three or four cases a year for charity. And this is another way that you are doing more connecting with your why, because in the work that you do with your lab, in the work that you do for this organization, is all about giving the smile back. Yeah, absolutely. We're involved with another group that, that does some really cool work called Esperanza, which is um, a group that provides uh, microfinance for groups in third world countries. And as a part of that, once they get into this group, this organization provides free dental care for them. And so we do trips to Dominican Republic and Guatemala every few years where we'll go out there and we'll spend a week, week and a half with a group of dentists. And we have a whole team that goes out there, travel to these little small communities, and we'll spend a whole week doing free dentistry for all of these people in these communities. I love that you are in the cutting edge in the technology in terms, because even in your lab does a very innovative work in terms of cosmetic dentistry. And at the same time, you are trying to spread all that knowledge and all that to as many people as you can. Yeah. Those organizations and the opportunity that we've had to participate with these people has has given me a lot of meaning in the work that I do. It's so enjoyable. It's my favorite, my favorite thing to do. So I absolutely love it. Can you tell us one story from it? The trips or the work in Give Back a Smile. So one, one story that really impacted you to see how meaningful this type of work, or even from your own clients, doesn't need to be a pro bono thing, but just one story that illustrates the impact of doing this work of the smile design, of giving back a smile to a person. We had a case probably oh, three or four years ago. This doctor contacted me and said they had a, a patient for Give Back a Smile, and it was a full mouth rehabilitation. So we were going to be restoring all of her teeth. And this was a woman who had been involved in an abusive relationship for most of her life. There was a lot of drug use in the relationship as well. And through both of those factors, her teeth were broken down, horribly discolored. What she did have left was horribly discolored. She looked about 15, 20 years older than she actually was. I was actually shocked when I saw her pictures and they told me how old she was. She just looked so much older. And her story was that she had just gotten out of this relationship and was trying to heal and trying to take care of her children. She got involved with this, with this program. She didn't have a job because she was so self-conscious about her, her teeth and her smile that she didn't want to see anybody. She had a hard time talking to people. Going out in public was hard for her because she was so self-conscious about the way she looked. And so we restored everything. We went out and got her a new wardrobe, some professional clothing. The organization helped set up interviews for her around town. And about six months later, after we finished this, I got a letter in the mail from this woman. And... It was an unbelievable feeling to hear her gratitude that there were people out there that actually cared enough to help her get her life back on track. And, you know, I receive notes like that once in a while from patients and it just makes everything worthwhile. It makes it all, all the hard work. You just forget about that. And you just, it makes you feel good knowing that you were able to be a part of helping someone change their life. Wow. It's a new lease on life, a new opportunity, a new beginning, new restart. 
So tell us what's next. What is exciting now in your plate that you are looking forward? I have been involved as a as an instructor in these types of programs for the past 20 years. Lots of different programs all over the country. We are just, it's been probably, oh my gosh, five or six years since we've done any kind of program like that because of COVID and all these different things um, and a lot of different reasons. But I have teamed up with a doctor that I've worked with for, for quite some time. Um, his name's Marvin Berlin, and he's a dentist in McKinney, Texas. His pra- he's got an amazing practice uh, in, in Texas, and most of what he does is cosmetic dentistry, fixing people's smiles on a daily basis. And he is uh, such an amazing teacher and trainer. And so he and I have teamed up and we're putting together, we're jump starting a, an old program that we used to teach, but we're adding some new material. We're, we're making a few changes to the program. And so we're starting our first program is going to be at the end of September in Chicago. And what it is, is it's training for dentists. We will actually have a patient there that we will be treating over the course of the two days. And it teaches the dentists how to be more conservative in their approach to dentistry. So we're teaching a lot of no prep veneers, how to create a smile for for someone that maybe has dental phobias that doesn't want to get their smile done because they're worried about, you know, having their teeth ground on or getting shots. And there are techniques out there that allow us to do that, but they don't really teach that in dental school. Mm. In order to get that training, these dentists need to find continuing education that's outside of their dental school training. Find people like you. (laughs) Yeah. There's so much interest in this type of dentistry because more and more patients want a conservative approach. I mean, you look at, you look at surgery over the last 20 or 30 years, surgery today has gotten so much you know, less invasive. You know, my father has had both of his knees replaced. He's in his, well, he's 90 now. But when he had his knees replaced, this was probably 35, 40 years ago. It was a major, major surgery. It was years of recovery for him. And nowadays they do the same surgery. It's way less invasive Patients recover way faster. It's much easier on them. And almost every facet of the medical field, as, you know, technology gets better and there are more advancements, we see this, we see getting less invasive with better results. Yet dentistry for such a long time has kind of pushed back on that. There's a large population of of dentistry that doesn't think it's the right way to do it. And for me, I just don't understand that mentality. You know, there's a lot of dentists that are still very, very aggressive, you know, in in doing something that's just cosmetic in nature. And it doesn't have to be that. We don't have to be that aggressive. We don't have to traumatize the patient's teeth in most cases. Now, not every patient is a candidate for that procedure, but if they are, that's the very best treatment for them. And so... It's been our goal since we started doing this to just educate the dental community, educate patients that there is a better way to do it. I love it. And it's a lot about the, because the innovations in so many fields are already there, but they are not spread in an equal way for more people to know from the patients to the doctors in this case, to be aware that there is that option out there to choose from. And I'm all about expanding possibilities. So I love this. So where can people find more about you and your work? We have two websites, experiencedentalstudio.com and durathin.com, D-U-R-A-T-H-I-N, durathin.com. So Experience Dental Studio website just has general information about our laboratory, what we do, our contact information. And the Durathin site is a little more focused on our product, which is the prepless veneer. So yeah, we, we, um, we're pretty active on 
on that website and we do a lot of speaking engagements and teaching. And so, you know, we're, we're out there. If people have questions or want more information, we're happy to share. Love it. So I will make sure that I put all those links and of course the give back a smile.com also out in the show notes of this episode. So Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for the work that you do, uh, the giving back a smile in so many different ways and spreading the smiles out there. You're so welcome. Thank you for, for having me on today. I appreciate it. Expanding possibilities, the mindset zone. Thank you for listening. And remember to visit mindset.zone. Yes, instead of .com, it's dot zone. There you can find all the episodes and other amazing resources, all at mindset.zone. And if you want to get a free chapter of my book, Mindset Zone, please go to mindset.zone forward slash book. As always, I'm so grateful you are here. Expand what's possible for you, for the ones around you, for the world.